A crucial window is coming up for the US men's national team against third, fourth and fifth place, starting with a trip to Mexico City to face El Tree. The US are looking for their fourth consecutive win against Tata Martino's side. However, they have never won a World Cup qualifier at the Azteca. So, Jimmy, talk to me about this match. What are you expecting the approach to be and how confident are you feeling in this US men's national team? Well, I'm super confident. I'll start there, Poppy. I think we have the talent, whether we have a couple key players missing. I'm looking at Serginho Dest, Weston McKinney. It looks like Brendan Aronson might be day to day, but we still have the quality to go get a result down in Azteca. Is it a win? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. But, but a draw would do enough, I think, to give us that confidence to get this group together so that we're prepared for the bigger, in my opinion, Panama game that's on the following uh, Wednesday. So there's, there's uh, or excuse me, on the Sunday. So there's a lot to unpack. With, with this team in particular, which makes me wonder what Greg Berhalter is going to do. Because Tyler Adams, who is our captain, if he gets another yellow, he misses the Panama game. So we have to be very thoughtful in terms of, and he does as well, of not making any rash decisions. But as we've seen, he's very emotional. That's why he's our captain, because he's an emotional leader as well as a top player. But do you have him in there slotted next to Kellen Acosta and maybe Yunus Musa, so it's a little bit more defensive-minded and you try to slow down that Mexican possession because they're very good at holding the ball and keeping the ball and just tiring you out with their possession. And you know they're going to go for it, especially at home, to try to get the crowd behind them. Or do we put like a Gio Reyna at the top of the midfield and maybe try to hurt them with our own possession, have Pulisic on one side, Timo Weah on the top, and then obviously I don't know who our number nine is going to be. Jesus Ferrer just scored three goals this past weekend for FC Dallas. Jordan Pifok has been unbelievable. He finally got called back in for young boys in the Swiss League. We got a lot of questions, but I could see us just being very thoughtful and, and almost pragmatic. And maybe you start Acosta just to be smart. And then at halftime, if you can see that there's some room for us to make adjustments and, and attack Mexico in a different type of way where there, there are some vulnerabilities, maybe that's when you bring on a Gio Reyna to try to change the game. But I'm very curious to see how we come out. I, I, I know you're going to get to predictions, but if we got a draw, I'd be pretty, pretty satisfied with that. Everybody should be satisfied with a draw. I think even Mexico. I mean, when you arrive to this point... <laughs> Yeah, when you arrive to this point, it's about trying to get enough to go to the World Cup because you're going to have time to get ready. And finally, you put all that kind of pressure. We were talking in the beginning, uh, when before just the qualification, that you don't want to leave for the last three games everything open with chance to be even out. And I think Mexico and U.S., they got actually the path clear for them. It's true that, uh, as you just mentioned, and talking about uh, the U.S. in the middle, you're in a player that we can. I think we were uh, missing him for quite a while after uh, a muscle injury that is not easy to arrive and then suddenly start playing once again for 90 minutes. That's something very important, to have a player who can be so creative because you're going to need it when you play at the Azteca Stadium. With that crowd, for me, the most important is how the young players are going to handle the situation. It's not going to be easy. Once you play for the World Cup to try to arrive to that, that spot against your biggest rival with 90,000 people uh, against you, booing you, it's not easy to, to manage the situation. Of course, you know that you won against Mexico, you know they have the capacity, you know they have the talent, but you need to balance a little bit that anxiety, the way of how to play, how to approach this game. So hopefully, Behalt does know exactly how to manage this situation. He knows what to tell to the players and the players inside to try to be calm. There are going to be moments where they are going to be dominated by the Mexican team, but with the speed that you go up front, you get more than enough to win that game. Listen, let's be honest, uh, on the road for the US, it's not been easy throughout World Cup qualifying, which is why we're in this position right now. And uh, Mexico, I don't think we've seen the best of Mexico yet whatsoever through World Cup qualifying. They are vulnerable, in my opinion. I think they're not as strong as they have been over recent World Cup qualifying processes. And uh, there's an opportunity for the US to create that upset. I don't like the noise going into uh, US men's national team camp right now for these three games. There's a lot of negativity, injuries, and uh, I would say a lot of negative press going into these qualifiers and I think what has happened in the previous World Cup cycle has bled all the way through to this moment right now. What I would like to see is fans, media members get behind the national team right now and try to push Greg and his young squad of players. As Lucho, Lucho touched upon it perfectly, this is a young group of players who are going to the Azteca to try and get a victory or even a point. It would be a great point if you get it. I think it would be a fantastic point. Mexico would be happy with that point as well. But I don't see any reason why the US can't go there with confidence to play their game and potentially win this. However, you do need your best players playing well. What squad does he go with, Greg? Obviously, you have that focus on the second game being 
and, and many people say this, the most important game. In my opinion, the most important game is this game right now. The one you should be focusing on is trying to get something from the Mexico game. Forget about what's happening around the corner. Deal with it when you get there. I think it's most important for these players to try and play their best. I think Greg's got to go with a strong starting 11. He doesn't want to go down there and lose this game. He doesn't want to go down there and try to defend in this game. He will want his team, and I certainly hope he feels this way, to try and win that World Cup qualifier. Because if you win that game, you've got one step to Qatar 2022. In my opinion, you're there. But it's going to take a lot to get them to get that victory. They've proven already in World Cup qualifying. They've got the job done already at home. Can you do it on the road now and create history? I think they can. But it's going to take a magnificent effort to make that happen. And you've got to hope that Mexico don't turn up. Because if they do, it's going to be very tough. Well, they've had three memorable nights against Mexico in the last three matches. So let's get to predictions then. Jimmy, I'll start <laughs> with you, of course. What are you going with? Give us an exact score as well. Okay, I will. I, I'm going to say that I love that stat, though. We beat Mexico three straight times. Nation League's final, and we scored on three set pieces, two corners and on a penalty. Then we beat him in the Gold Cup final off a set piece. Miles Robinson headed it home. And then we scored two goals and a Dosa Cero win in World Cup qualifying in Cincinnati in the run of play. Weston McKinney scored, but then Christian Pulisic ended up starting it off off a good cross from Team Awea. So we've done it all. We've done it, and I just feel like, can we, can we beat them four times in a row? Can we do that in a calendar year? That would be unheard of. That would be history making beating them three times in a year is already history making to go down there and do it would be really embarrassing for them when I look at Mexico and I know you're looking for a short answer and I gave you a long one here Poppy but <laughs> Mexico play away to Honduras and that's an, that's a game they should win away to Honduras and they play home to El Salvador they don't have to go get the three points here but I think reputationally for Tata Martino the manager of Mexico and I've got a phone ring and they want me to get off as well I got one one draw here okay I got a one one draw and hopefully that'll tee us up to have a good performance against uh, Panama in the next game Jimmy, I'm surprised that you didn't go for the answer of let's make history here, but it's fine. It's fine. I agree with you. I think it's going to be even a, a, an open, at least in the beginning. I think the, both of the teams, even though that they are going to be happy to have an, a, a point for each other because you play against a stadium full of uh, 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 passionate supporters, Mexico has to go forward, has to try to show them that, yeah, they're not going to be beaten once again by um, uh, USA. So I think they're going to be open at the back. They're going to allow some chances. And I think the U.S. is going to use it. So I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw, one point for each one. And we'll see them on the World Cup. I'm just wondering if that's Greg Berhalter calling up Jimmy for a, a, an emergency call up here. I'm certainly hoping that's not the case. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is going to be an absolute blast. I'm really looking forward to the game. My heart will always lead for the U.S. getting a win in this uh, game. But I think this one's going to be very, very close. Mexico and the U.S. want to go to Qatar 2022. They certainly don't want to lose this game. I think you'll see Mexico try to attack, but... They've not been too great, in my opinion, offensively in qualifying so far. If they turn up on the day in Mexico, they'll beat the U.S. But I don't think they do. I think the U.S. gets a draw and I'm sitting on the fence.